Pieter Kleppe, who is the editor-in-chief over at Brussels Report. Uh, good to have you on the show. Um, we'll get to the European reaction in just a bit, but I want to first talk to you about uh, the foreign minister, Iranian foreign minister Javad Zarif's tweet. I mean, it's interesting. He's really trying to put the pressure on the U.S. administration. Sort of, the, the, If you look at the original tweet, the red, white, and blue colors in the tweet, uh, stating there are only two options here. Well, definitely Iran is um, is upping the ante, is, is trying to pressure the Biden administration. Uh, but I'm not sure if that is uh, going to work. I mean, it's clear that Biden ideally wants to go back to the um, uh, to the nuclear deal um, and uh, and would be prepared ultimately to also then lift uh, Iranian sanctions, not all the sanctions, but at least uh, some of the sanctions. Uh, but in any case, uh, Biden does not want to be pressured uh, in, by Iran uh, into doing that. So at the moment, we have a bit of a chicken uh, and egg situation whereby Iran says, OK, fine, we can go back, but first you lift the sanctions. Whereas the United States definitely first wants Iran to comply. Um, and uh, only then it will think to maybe lift the sanctions and the uh, actions of Iran to enrich up to 60 percent, I mean, I think are quite quite grave because uh, you need about 90 percent, according to experts, uh, in order yeah. to to fabricate a nuclear uh, bomb. Uh, Peter, tell me this. I mean, how did we get here? I mean, just last week there was there seemed to be some hope of reviving the deal. I mean, can an attack which which Iranians firmly believe that Israel carried out, is that enough to sort of derail the progress, the positive momentum that we've been seeing at least for the past week or so? Well, that's one element that is indeed, uh, you could say, derailing uh, the talks. Um, however, there are other issues as well. The EU has been imposing sanctions, targeted sanctions, on uh, uh, top Iranian regime officials that are seen to be involved with the killing of 1,500 protesters against the Iranian regime back in, uh, in November 2019. So this actually also is something that the EU says should, in theory, have nothing to do with the nuclear talks. But of course, the Iran uh, sees it uh, uh, sees it differently. Um, I mean, where do we go from now? I think indeed the more of this distractions, uh, you could say, we will um, we will see the the harder it will be uh, to return to the nuclear deal. Also, let's keep in mind that Israel, rightly or wrongly, did not see the Iran nuclear deal as a guarantee against Iran developing a nuclear bomb. In, in Israel's mind, that deal actually enabled Iran to continue work behind the scenes to the point that Iran would um, uh, reach the ability to develop a nuclear time so quickly that Israel would no longer be able to respond, which was the main reason why Israel was always uh, quite hostile against uh, against the deal. So uh, with all that in mind, I think the only answer is that uh, you probably have to link all the issues uh, together, uh, one, and and two, you also have to improve the deal of uh, of 2015. You, not just uh, uh, take it up again, but but really take on board some of the concerns that also Israel had that I think were at least to a certain degree justified and should not only be a concern for Israel, but for the whole, the whole Middle East and for Europe. Um, okay, in your words, if we were to link up all the issues, um, how does Brussels uh, play its hand right now moving forward? Well, the, the EU is definitely uh, trying to be sort of the honest broker um, and uh, is, is sort of chairing the talks, you could say, uh, with, uh, with Iran and, and, uh, and the United States, not even being in the same building in, uh, in Vienna. Now, uh, of course, when, when push comes to shove, ultimately the EU uh, will side with, uh, with the United States. We've seen that in the past the EU had decided to have some kind of a special purpose vehicle, an arrangement to enable European companies to trade with Iran uh, and, and ignore whatever the Trump administration then was deciding on Iran. But that has completely failed because, of course, these big companies will not... Uh, will not trade with Iran against the wishes of the United States. So, so whatever happens, at the end of the day, the EU will side and have to, has to side uh, with, um, with, the, with the US. But given that reality, it is still trying to be as much as possible, let's say, the conciliatory uh, partner here. Mm. 
Uh, Peter, we'll have to leave it there. Peter, thanks for joining us here on TRT World. I do appreciate your analysis. <laughs>